Hi, inventors. I'm Lily, the twirling tech goddess. I'm black, I dance, I'm queer, and I'm an engineer. Welcome to The Twerk Shop, a show that explicitly encourages radical diversity and inclusion by making the process of learning tech more fun, accessible, and relatable to people underrepresented in STEM. Each week, you'll come along with me as I create something fabulous using cutting edge tools and technologies. Then I'll put it through my patented twirl test to make sure that it's stage ready. That's right, we twirl with our tech because you know what they say, the family that slays together increases their socioeconomic status together. On this episode, we're gonna be making a motorized headpiece using one of my favorite technologies, 3D printing. I'll walk you through the hardware and software that we'll be using for the production and design of the headpiece. And then I'll introduce you to the motorized element that we'll use to make it move and spin. A little backstory, when I was on tour as a figure skater, a French compatriot of mine noticed that anytime I saw something cute in a shop, I would hold it up to my head, like so. So fall semester, I'm walking through the bookstore on campus here, and I spot a little heart that's like moving and and I knew I needed to have it on my head. So I asked the sales clerk, where can I get one of those? And I basically blacked out as he spouted off all this information about how to make it. And I had no idea what the he was talking about. So here we are, two semesters later, and I finally have the tools and skills to make it happen. So let's get started. So this is a 3D printer. This one belongs to the school and it was about $2,000. This one belongs to me and it's a 10th of the price and a lot less cumbersome. So this one doesn't even work. So let's get this raggedy piece of out of here and get to work. <laughs> this is the bed, it gets hot. This is the extruder, it gets hotter. This is the filament you'll use. And you feed this filament into the extruder, it melts it, drips it on the bed, makes a 3D print. It's amazing. There's multiple ways to get the image to the extruder via this processor. One of the ways is using an external SD card. You can also connect it directly to your laptop using a USB cable or your desktop. When it comes to 3D printing, you first need the document that you want to print. Much like any 2D print job on a paper printer, you can print a pre-existing document or you can create your own document. We'll touch more on creating 3D models in a future video where I'll be creating my own high heels. Today, however, we'll be using a pre-existing document to create a motorized headpiece. The documents have authors and those authors are published at specific sites. Sites such as Yegi and Cults 3D have 3D prints that authors, artists, creators post for sale. If you purchase the right 3D printer, however, it may in fact come with some complimentary exclusive 3D models designed by excellent designers for that specific brand, such as Ultimaker. There are also document libraries of sorts that offer open source free download of pre-existing document models, such as Thingiverse, which is hands down the most popular and the one we'll be using for this project. Now let's go over to Thingiverse and download the Gearheart document. Link in the description. These downloads come in various types and you'll want to look for the .stl file to download that one. There are other file types, but for now we'll just focus on our .stl files. Next, we'll download a 3D printing app. Think of this as our print preview. For this project, I'll be using Cura. Link in the description below. From inside Cura, we'll import our .stl file. This takes our 3D model and slices it, creating a new render that can be printed layer by layer. Now let's get the document to the printer and let the printer do its thing. First, I printed a prototype and I'm glad I did because this specific print had an enclosed bottom and I needed an open bottom for the motor. After finding the parts that better suited my needs and removing the parts that didn't, I merged those files and made a second print, which is the one that I provided for y'all. Link in the description. 
And now let's talk post-production. So depending on the PLA you use, you may or may not need or want to smooth the surface of your print. As you can see up close, prints leave layer lines. So to smooth that surface, you may want to use sandpaper to get rid of some of those lines. And you can also soak your piece in acetone or nail polish remover. Once you've done that, you could also prime the surface with a Plasti Dip or primer if you're gonna paint on top of it or adhese any glitter or bedazzling effects. So this is your motor. It's a few bucks. Link in the description. You can just get these on Amazon. Super simple. You power it and it spins. This is gonna be our external power source. It's a battery pack. Four batteries go inside. You can get these in the size of three batteries. This four batteries is six volts. Three batteries is gonna be four volts. And two batteries is three volts. The thing that I love about this is it also has this handy dandy on off switch. So we can turn it on and make sure we have power. If we see a little spark, we know that this is working. So I'm gonna use these alligator clips available at any hardware store. These are a few bucks so that I don't actually have to touch the wires now that they're live. And I'm gonna connect one of those to each of the rivets on the motor and boom. Off, super handy. So now you'll get the idea if I take the fan piece off, pop the head piece on, Houston, we have liftoff. <laughs> to turn this into a headpiece, we're gonna need a few things. Essentials. Handy dandy glue gun and glue sticks. Your favorite pair of scissors. Your least favorite headband. And a small Tupperware with lid. And keep your motor nearby. So we're gonna build from the bottom up, is my strategy. So I take the headband, which is gonna rest here on my head, and we're gonna glue the bottom or the base of the Tupperware onto our headband. And that will house the motor. And then we'll put our lid on the motor and then hot glue our headpiece onto the lid, which will allow the motor to stay weatherproof inside. Let's get started. So now that this thing is fully assembled, I'm already thinking of finishing touches and embellishments that I wanna make to cover the headband and cover the Tupperware. And I invite you to play and have fun with your finishing touches and embellishments. Please share your photos and videos of your creations down in the comments below. And they better not look like mine. Now let's take this headpiece for a twirl. A wearable isn't useful to me if it's not stage ready. So I'm gonna go get changed and I'll see y'all on the mountain. Share, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. <laughs> Remember, who we become today 
will determine what we are capable of creating tomorrow. This program was made possible by the BTU Lab at the University of Colorado Boulder.